this is a talk about uh, a little project uh, which may be the worst named project in the world. Um, and I've named a few projects poorly. Um, as you will see, um, it's called CF Cubed. And I really hope you could hear that that was spelt with a C and not a K. Uh, because it's a talk about putting Kubernetes behind CF. So um, there's three of, us that, that, three of us that are going to be talking. Um, unfortunately, uh, two of us are called Jules, which is going to be a problem. Um, so I'm going to talk about what this is and why the hell we did it. Um, I'm Dr. Jules. Um, Andrew, who's uh, not Jules, thankfully, uh, is going to talk about how we did it. Um, and then uh, Jules from Germany, or Hair Jules, um, which, if I ever go bold, I'm not going to be happy about him being hair jewels and me uh, not being. Um, we'll actually demo it and show that this is a real, very cool thing. Uh, and I'm going to try and go really fast, because I'd really like there to be time for questions at the end, um, because this is some pretty cool stuff, but also uh, maybe some quite controversial and interesting stuff. So what is this talk about? This talk is about a little elephant named Kubernetes. Uh, which is in the room. Uh, has anyone heard of Kubernetes? Huh. Um, and the elephant is a little bit scary, if we're honest. It's a big elephant in the room. Uh, and so what we've done is we've given it a nickname to make it sound less scary. And that nickname is CFCR. Um, but it's still quite a scary elephant, actually, um, in terms of what Cloud Foundry uh, should and shouldn't be. Um, why is that? Uh, let's talk about what Cloud Foundry is. Um, I think Cloud Foundry is two things. Um, one which I love is a developer experience. It's a developer experience about stateless apps, CF push, CF bind service, and don't push Mongo to the cloud. Right? That's, that's the CF push journey. Right? Um, it's also, of course, a container orchestrator. It's Diego and Garden and, and all the stuff about how it happens, right? So it's a developer experience, and it's how we happen to implement that developer experience today. Uh, and these, these are two roles, right? Um, these are one role which just hopefully doesn't even see this underlying stuff, uh, but also a role that sees this underlying stuff all the time. So Kubernetes. Uh, what is that? Well, it also is a developer experience. It's a developer experience about deployment and replica sets and nodes and taints and annotations and all of this stuff. Um, and it has a container orchestrator. It is a container orchestrator. I would argue some of these roles are a bit more overlapping in Kubernetes. Um, the people who might use deployment sets and replica sets might be developers, and they might be operators. Um, but there are higher level tools. There's Helm and Scaffold and things like that. Uh, that and draft that are more focused on that developer role. So let's put them side by side, right? That's our current solution, um, is how about we put them side by side and we'll call one CFCR, one CFAR, and everything's solved, right? Yeah, kind of. Um, but you still have these two very separate systems, two sets of nodes. Uh, that operator has to manage both of these in pretty different ways. Uh, and actually, it's a bit sad. The communities are still kind of separate. Even though they're interacting better, they're not really integrated as much as you would hope that they uh, might be. And as an app developer, you're not really getting any of the features of Kubernetes. right? Your apps um, are in this walled garden, and you can't take advantage of custom scheduling um, or anything like that that might be in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, so uh, we've had various ways of trying to do this better or differently. Uh, one we spent a lot of time working on and had a talk about last year, actually, was why don't we just write a Bosch CPI that deploys to Kubernetes? Right? Bosch is great. Uh, Bosch has this CPI abstraction, which is why you can deploy Cloud Foundry to any cloud that you like. Right? You can deploy it to Amazon or GCP or SoftLayer or IBM or, or wherever. And it doesn't matter. Right? So why don't we just treat Kubernetes as a modern IaaS and deploy it to that? Um, and, and you get some advantages from this, but your app developer still doesn't get any of the advantages of Kubernetes. That's still sitting higher up. You still have to operate both of them. Your operator still has to operate Diego and Garden as well as your uh, Kubernetes stuff. So you're not really getting the benefits. You just sort of put one of them on top of, each, on top of the other. Um, 
So we looked at this fissile approach, uh, which is uh, uh, Susie's approach originally, which is to take the Bosch releases, convert them into containers, uh, and then put those onto Kubernetes. And this is nice because you don't have two, um, you don't have both Bosch and Kubernetes sort of both fighting over your set of nodes. You have kind of a native containerized Cloud Foundry, which means you can use more of the Kubernetes features and actually get something out of the fact that you put this layer in there. Uh, but it's still, you've still got Diego, you've still got Kubernetes, uh, your app developer still can't use any of the Kubernetes uh, features, and your operator still needs to know about both of these systems. Um, there's a side one, which Garden, the Garden team are doing at the moment, which is, well, why don't we have Garden use ContainerD? Then at least we'd be able to use the same container engine and maybe share some nodes, but that still doesn't really solve the problems. Um, so why did all of these solutions keep failing? What's the fundamental problem that we keep running into here? Um, I think the fundamental problem is this. It's layers, right? Um, if you keep adding layers, no matter how great each of the layers is, your life doesn't get simpler. You only get a benefit when you replace something. You have to take something away. If you keep adding really good things, you still end up with increasingly complicated things. Um, uh, and I summarized it um, uh, a few months ago by saying, now you have two problems, right? Uh, when you put one of these things on top of each other, you have two problems. You have two things to manage. And actually, uh, for a lot of these solutions, instead of it being N problems from Cloud Foundry application runtime and M problems from Cloud Foundry container runtime, when you put them on top of each other, you actually have N times M problems because each one can explode um, at each other and you've no idea what's going on. Uh, so why don't we do option five? Um, I think this is the obvious kind of uh, way uh, this has been leading. Um, option five, obviously, is, hey, Cloud Foundry is a developer experience. It's CF push, CF bind service, don't push Mongo to cloud. Kubernetes is an operator experience and a scheduler. Uh, it's a really great scheduler that uh, clearly does a lot of what we need. Why don't we just use Kube as a CF scheduler and get the best of both worlds, right? And that way, your app developer is happy, your operator is happy, everyone is happy. Why don't we all be happy, right? Well, there are, there are, uh, so there are some reasons, right? There are, so uh, there are reasons we didn't do this in the past. Why didn't we do this? Because Kube is a lot bigger than Diego, and that used to be a problem. Um, it's a much bigger thing for us to maintain um, than a small scheduler where we can operate quickly. Um, and you need to move fast sometimes. It's important to really ask about every dependency, what value is that bringing to you? Because there's an opportunity cost to pulling that in that could be spent on other stuff. And frankly, who cares? As a Cloud Foundry user, what does it matter what the scheduler is? I'm going to do a CF push, and I'm not going to see it. Um, so why, why, why do we want to do this if, if these are all true? Uh, well, basically, lots of bullet points. What it comes down to is Kubernetes is a great scheduler. Scheduling is commoditized. And it turns out that so many Cloud Foundry customers now have Kubernetes for Cloud Foundry container runtime or to run their functions that they're already having to operate it. We're already having to figure out how to operate it and how to make that something that works for users via things like CFCR. So given we're already doing it, wouldn't it be nice for those users uh, to let them reuse that for their app runtime? Um, and that's basically what it comes down to. And because it's commoditized, you've got Kube as a service. Um, you've got ops teams that already know how to use it. There's a big community with lots of available skill for it, um, and frankly, it lets us focus on the really important stuff, in my opinion, which is not pushing Mongo to cloud, right? Because if we move the scheduler piece out, then we can stop having the conversation about which scheduler is better or about how Diego and Cloud Foundry compare or Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes compare. We can start having the real conversation, which is about CF push and not pushing Mongo. Um, so what did we build? Let's talk about what this actually looks like. Uh, and Andrew will do that. OK. So what did we build? Um, there we go. OK. So um, first, we'll talk about the, the four main things that we built. And then we'll talk a little bit about you know, what, what we need to do more um, and how things are going. So the four things we have is OPI, 
um, and I'll talk about each of these individually. Sync, registry, and stagernities. I think we're going to call it. It's a good, name. good name. I think it's a good name. So OPI, and, and basically OPI is, is the main thrust of this uh, proposal and work. It's, it's to provide a, a, an interface, and we called it the orchestrator pro provider interface, which is an abstraction over what goes to the scheduler from, from CF, right? And so it's uh, inspired by Diego's LRPs and tasks and um, just the, the CPI model, right? So it's the API we will communicate from CF to either Diego or Kubernetes uh, so that you can pick and choose. So next thing is, is sync or sync or another reason Jules is a really bad namer. Um, originally, Sync uh, from Diego was NSYNC, and I think it's because they like Justin Timberlake really a lot. Um, but it's really the, the convergence loop that checks what's in CF and decides what should be in Diego or in the orchest orchestration layer, um, and then make sure that they're in sync, right? So it downloads the stage app as a Docker image, and it creates Kubernetes deployments inside Kubernetes now. Right? There's another piece to uh, NSYNC, which is a um, API layer where Cloud Controller will send requests to start and stop tasks and, and, um, and LRPs. That's uh, to be another one of the items that's to be done. Uh, right now, we've, we are just using the sync loop right now, but it's, once we have that, it'd be very easy to implement the, the other two pieces. Okay, so the next thing is a registry. So we implemented a registry that is an OCI registry that vendors um, vends the images based on the CF droplets and on the uh, CF Linux FS2 base. And it still uses droplets. So we're just you know, generating the droplets that CF uses and be able to uh, create an OCI image from that and then run that inside Kubernetes. And now our favorite name, Stagernetes. Um, it implements staging inside Kubernetes by running a, a job, right? A single one-off task, like um, what happens in Diego is we run a task to do the staging, to upload the bits, um, and it just runs as a one-off staging task. It does full build pack detection, et cetera, just exactly like it's done in, in CF uh, on Diego, and then uplate, uploads the droplets in through the Cloud Controller API to upload. So that's what we have built so far. So what's next? Well, we still need to build route emitter, um, register the routes, TPS, log streaming, a bunch of other stuff. Oh, wait, we already built route emitter. Yeah, we did route emitter this, about a week ago. Um, so we do have in the demo that, uh, that Julian's going to show, um, the routes are already registered and, and in the Go router. Uh, but we still have TPS, log streaming, et cetera, to be done. So now let's do the demo, because that's way cooler. Okay, yeah. We're switching monitors now. That's the really impressive bit of the demo. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it shows up. Okay. okay. Do you want to hold it? Or hold uh, that will be hard to hold it. <laughs> so I need both hands. Okay, um, so let's do the demo. Um, uh, I will first explain what you will see here on these four panes. So on the right two panes, I will do a watch on the um, Kubernetes pods and um, a watch on the Kubernetes jobs. So we can see that there are no resources yet. And make the font larger. Uh, larger, I will try it. Um, it was like, is that better? That's good. Okay. So, we're stopped. Okay, and here we will see in the upper left pane, we will see the CF push, and in the lower left pane, I will show um, the staging logs and also the deployments that are appearing on Kubernetes. So, let's just start in CF push Dora to Kube. Let's see what happens. So the first thing you see is it's starting creating the app, binding the routes, uploading the app bits, 
And after it's uploaded, it will start with the staging, and you immediately see that uh, a job and a pod is running on Kubernetes doing the staging. And we will now take a look at the logs if I'm fast enough. Um, Coop logs. Let's see. Uh, with a yeah, F. And now we can see, okay, it's already almost through. It's done the staging. Staging is completed. So the next thing that we will see is the deployment appearing in um, Coop get deployment. And there it is already. Um, and the pod is also running. At that point, um, Deb is deployed to Kubernetes, so it took less than a minute, and we pushed an app to Kubernetes with a CF experience, and now let's just um, curl that app. Uh, that was my test before that one. So, curl Dora, hi, I'm Dora, and yeah, that's about it. We just pushed the app to Kubernetes. Nice. So I think we have zero more slides, because how would you follow that? Um, but we're, we're very happy to, to take any questions. Do you plan to add integration into the TCP router or just the Go router? Um, so at the moment, we're just focusing on the regular CF push. And then we'll start to add features like uh, TCP routing and things like that. Um, so I, I would I, so state, stating the somewhat obvious, but I think it's worth stating. This is an MVP. Uh, this is not complete, uh, and there's a decent amount of work to make this complete. But it does show you that you really can get an end-to-end -end CF push uh, using this approach. Um, so it, it, it's a proof of concept, and it does prove the concept. But there's going to be a lot of edges that we need to do to, to complete the whole. Um, of what Diego does for you today. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, this is a lot of information to digest, but some of the approaches that you mentioned earlier, trying to fit the big elephant into a room, we tried that. Um, but this approach, what I understand, I just want to make sure I understand it correctly. So you're saying, basically, we, we're going to use the cube uh, Kubernetes to replace the garden C and the garden container? Is that uh, what? Both garden and Diego. And Diego is what you're trying to say. Uh, and not replace. I should, uh -huh. so, so it would be an option. So um, it, this is an approach that we've entirely stolen from Docker, right? Mm -hmm. um, lots of people like Swarm. Lots of people like Kubernetes. So Docker said, let you pick. Uh, if you've got an investment in Kube, we'll let you use Kube. Okay. If you like the features that Swarm gives you, you can use Swarm. In the same way, I think a lot of people are going to want to stay with Diego mm -hmm. uh, because it gives you this nice integrated all-in-one experience. It's very mm -hmm. simple and it's tailored for stateless apps. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, a lot of people have investments and skills and existing Kubernetes deployments, mm -hmm. uh, either for CFCR mm -hmm. or for functions, which are often run on um, a Kubernetes deployment. And for those people, it might well make sense to plug in Kubernetes. So, so it's not... It's not an either or, uh -huh. it, is, um, it is an abstraction. And I think this is the, this is the benefit of this now being commoditized, mm -hmm. right? Now that scheduling is kind of a commoditized thing, okay. we can give people choice about which one of those to use mm -hmm. um, without really slowing down the higher levels because it's kind of an agreement on mm -hmm. what, what scheduling looks like. Yeah, one, one thing I wanted to say is, is we know that the Kubernetes um, developer experience isn't great. Right? It takes a long time to get an app up and running. And so this is also a, a bonus to the Kubernetes community, right? To be able to have a better CF push right. experience for Kubernetes, maybe that's something, you know, people who are already running Kubernetes and they want a better way to do it. Um, right. Yep, they will have it. Um, so Cloud Foundry is kind of opinionated when you run apps, like you can't uh, have persistence and things like that. Um, but do you think that this will allow apps running on Cloud Foundry to utilize persistence or like UDP routing or things that Kubernetes allows? Yeah, so, so, there, um, so, so one thing that this does, and one thing we like about this approach versus some other ways people have tried to do this, is it does create really first class kube objects. Mm -hmm. So what you end up with is a real deployment object 
but it's not special in any way. It's just the, the, the images are just images. Uh, there's no like machinery to stream a droplet in or to do anything like that. We've just created an image that is your latest staged app uh, and given its Kubers a deployment. So it is running in kind of a special namespace. It's like it's running in a cube namespace. Um, and it's certainly not part of MVP for you to be able to play with that and do stuff. But on the other hand, when you want that escape hatch um, of, OK, I've done this, I see I've pushed it, and now I want to start working with that, uh, it should be quite easy to do that because you've actually got a real kube object um, and a real native kube object. So if you want to pull the escape hatch and move it into a different namespace and start working on that yourself, or even ask kube to pull down the object model for it, uh, or create a new one because you've got the image, it should be a lot easier to do that. Uh, if you want to. But it's, it's not certainly part of our initial MVP to add those features directly to CF. And my, personally, I'd be hesitant to add them to CF user experience, because I think the CF user experience is about not having those features. Um, but the escape hatch is probably nice. So. Can you show us what components are running in pods, what Cloud Foundry components? So everything is containerized, right? Uh, so can you show yeah, us? Yeah, so, so just, just for ease, uh, most of the co components at the moment are deployed as Bosch jobs. Um, just because that's an easy way of, because Bosch will give you uh, easy ways of linking like the uh, username and passwords that you need for things like Cloud Controller to grab the droplets. Um, all, all the cube stuff runs in CF and then talks into a Kubernetes for the deployments. I think, I think as we do this more for real, um, it might make a lot of sense to do CRDs um, and API um, aggregation for some of these things. So to use Kubernetes for some of these components. But at the moment, we do them within kind of so, as, as Bosch jobs. So we are kind of replacing the CPI as well. Um, the Bosch CPI, which talks to the um, cloud provider. So, so, at the, so, so at the moment, the actual jobs and Cloud Foundry is deployed by Bosch. So you have options. You can continue to deploy the Cloud Foundry however you like um, and talk to a Kubernetes, which may be CSCR, maybe something else. Or you can use one of the projects like the Kubernetes CPI or like Fissile so that your Cloud Foundry jobs are also in Kubernetes. So that, that's kind of an orthogonal problem, right? How do you get the Cloud Foundry bits on Kubernetes? And how do you get the apps Cloud Foundry creates on Kubernetes? And we're solving the second problem and there's quite a few approaches to the first problem, but that's, that's kind of out of scope for us. That's, that's not something we're worried about. That's great. Cool. So this is cool, but obviously uh, I'll do a free plug, I guess. So Dimitri and I have been working on a CPI. Uh, the problems that Jules mentioned, uh, we solve those. Uh, confidently. So come see that if you're coming to KubeCon, we'll make it public. It's not necessarily a replacement for this. I think, you know, we'll see what the community says. But my issue, and I guess question for this is, at first you criticize the CPI approach because you'll have two problems. I fail to see how you have one problem here. Because let's say Kube has an update, you'll have to update Kube, and you'll have to keep it in sync. Let's say CF has an update, right? So you still have those two problems. And then more importantly, you have another problem, which is that you define a layer, an API, for those layers. And unless Kubernetes and CF are working together, uh, one or the other are going to break that abstraction. And obviously, since you work in CF, you probably can convince you know, Eric and the rest, maybe with some <laughs> you know, being nice to them, uh, to not break the layer. But how are you going to convince Kubernetes? So I, I think, I think that, so this is a good question. So, so there's two things here, right? So first, first is the, the sort of CPI versus this. And these are totally different problems. Um, so the new CPI is going to be awesome for how do I get my Cloud Foundry stuff onto Kubernetes, right? Because you're gonna, it's going to be a, a, a nice approach. So you can do a Bosch deploy. And now your Cloud Foundry, uh, and if you're not using this, your Diego are running on top of Kube. This is solving a completely different problem. Uh, which is the apps that you created with Cloud Foundry. We want to run those in Kubernetes as well. And that's just at a different layer. 
Um, I think the second part of the question is how do you deal with the fact that you still have the Kubernetes? So when I say you only have what you, you have two problems, I'm not suggesting that once you do this, you'll never have a problem again. Um, you will have problems. But instead of having all of Diego and all of Kubernetes to manage, you will only have Kubernetes to manage as a scheduler. Um, and, and sorry, just, just one thing. So in terms of that API bit, in terms of like how do you manage the fact that Kubernetes is going to have new versions, uh, we manage it exactly how Bosch manages it. So like Bosch has a CPI, which gives you a little abstraction, so you're not exposed to the whole thing, uh, and so that you can keep that working. We're doing the exact same trick. It's an OPI, so it's the same trick as Bosch does, but at the orchestrator level instead of at the IaaS level. Right, but the point I'm making, so two points besides my plug, okay? So I won't plug again. But the point I'm making is that um, it's not just about getting it running the first time. It's keeping it running. Sure. And keeping it running while you're deploying and you're doing updates. Why? Because there are people trying to hack into the system, sure. creating CVs and so on, right? So that's the mo number one point. And the second point is that you've defined a, an abstraction that unless the two communities are agreeing, they're going to break. Now, one of them may not break it because you can convince, but the other one might break because it might add something new or change Max, things that Max, doesn't the, work. The, the, the Kube interfaces are pretty stable with regards okay. to the bits we're using. They're just deployments. Uh, and it, it, so you are, you are right. You have to worry about how you keep that Kube maintained and running. That's what CFCR solves. So what this is saying is, for people who don't want to worry about Kube at all, hey, use Diego. But if you already need to get that Kube running and patched and updated um, you, for your functions, for your Kube, for your stateful workloads, and you, so you already have to solve that problem, then you probably don't also want to solve uh, a secondary problem of doing that again with Diego, right? Um, I love Diego, but it's an additive problem um, that if you already have to solve the second one, which is a bigger problem, right? I'd rather only solve the Diego problem, but given many people can't only solve the Diego problem and have to solve the Kube problem, um, it's nice to give them the option of reusing that investment to also power their apps, right? Uh, and and uh, this is a problem that, that most people have to face for, for things like functions. So whether you're using Whisk or Riff or any of these approaches, you're probably sitting on Kubernetes in terms of the things that get spun up. And you also have to worry about what if Kubernetes changes there. But actually, the, the APIs are reasonably stable, and Kube's been pretty good, uh, I think, about um, uh, keeping things working across releases. So, so um, do you expect, it sounds like, so like I, I saw you guys run kubectl commands. So obviously, the Kubernetes cluster is also exposed with, a, with the API endpoint. How, how is that set up, and do you expect that? users would potentially hit Kubernetes directly in addition to CF push, or what's the thinking so there? I think that's a decision that different people are going to make differently. Um, I'm pretty opinionated personally. Um, I think the vast majority of developers should never see Kubernetes. Uh, I think they should be CF pushing, um, binding a service, um, and reusing uh, services for stateful stuff. So they probably shouldn't ever need to do that. Um, and I think the more you can make that happen, I think the happier your life is. But on the other hand, very clearly, many people disagree with that view um, and do want all the power and flexibility of being able to go and have that escape hatch when they want it. Um, so it is something that, that I think the project is agnostic to. Right? We, we want to give people both options. Uh, but, but the fact that you do have both op options is nice. So th there would be alternate approaches where you just build all this stuff in Kubernetes, right? And really integrate it with the Kube APIs. But in that case, it's very hard not to expose your app developers to all that stuff, right? Um, this is saying you can, th this is the full CF push experience which hides all that stuff. But also, if you want to look under the hood, you've got a really Kube native thing that's being created. Yeah, and then also, <clears throat> I guess, you know, one of the things Garden kind of helps manage today is like Windows, you know, the Windows abstraction. And so I assume the thinking would just be to let the Kubernetes community catch up there and, and at some point right. th that, would be, that would be something you could manage there. Exactly okay. that. So, so because we've got this, this abstraction, we're not coupling ourselves to Kube, right? We're, we're not saying we're going to make all these Kube abstractions leak up um, because then things like Windows become really hard, right? Because then you, you are locked to Kubernetes because you need all the Kubernetes primitives. You need etcd and all this stuff if you represent that into your API. 
Um, we're not doing that. We're just saying if you already have a Kube investment, uh, in the same way, I guess it's a weird analogy, in the same way today, if you do CF deployment by default, we'll deploy a Postgres database for you, right? But if you've already got a Postgres or a MySQL or, or RDS or some other managed database, you just give us the URL as a property in CF deployment and we'll use that. It's a very similar thing. There, there, there's a built-in scheduler, which is probably Swarm, but if you've already got CFCR or you've already got some Kube as a service, just give us the URL, give us the API endpoint, give us the credentials, and we can use that instead. Uh, and so on Windows, you just carry on happily using what you have today. Um, as soon as Kube catches up on Windows, you have the option of using that on Windows. Thanks. Do we have any more time? Or is... Make it good. Just quickly, um, you mentioned binding services. Is that supported now? And I guess maybe a broader question, like if I have questions about does this thing support X, do you have a public backlog somewhere? Um, it is public. Uh, it's currently in github.com slash jewels, which is, happens to be this jewels, <laughs> um, uh, slash cube. Uh, and you have to hear the C. It's C-U-B-E. Um, sorry, uh, cube. Um, uh, I know this is a problem, uh, and so we are going to have to rename Kubernetes. Um, <laughs> um, we will come up with a better name. Um, we hope to submit it um, into uh, uh, the, you know, as a, as a, uh, a proposal to runtime PMC soon, at which point it will move. Hopefully, uh, assuming everyone's on board with putting this in. Um, but at the moment, it's there. We have some issues there. Um, I think a lot of this will just work because it's just a case of mapping it into environment variables. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of rough edges, uh, so I, I doubt it works right now. Uh, contributions welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I was sort of immediately starting to think about yeah. volume um, services. And uh, contributions there, by the sure way, was spelled with a K. That was contributions. <laughs>